Approximately 30,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported annually to the CDC, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But according to the Journal of Investigative Medicine, at least 300,000 people in the United States are diagnosed with Lyme disease every year. That's 10 times more than is actually reported. Lyme disease is usually transmitted by the bite of a tick, but recent studies suggest that it may be sexually transmitted as well. There is even strong evidence that suggests Lyme disease may be passed from mother to child in the womb. According to the Lyme Research Alliance, there are more than 100 strains of the Borrelia bacteria that have been found in the United States, and 300 strains worldwide. It is being called a modern-day plague, and for good reason. Lyme disease has been able to travel to 49 states. Deer, raccoons, white-footed mice, and gray squirrels are all potential carriers of Lyme disease. The Lyme Research Alliance also reports that up to 50 species of migratory birds are known to be infected with Lyme disease. Typically, ticks like to hide in tall grass or bushes in wooded areas and wait for unsuspecting people or animals to pass close enough by for them to latch on. Once a tick has found a host, it looks for a good spot to feed on the blood of its victim. The tick will engorge itself with the host's blood, growing from a few millimeters long to approximately the size of a raisin in just 36 to 72 hours. During this time, various infections can be released into the host body. Studies reveal that Borrelia burgdorferi, the infection responsible for Lyme disease, can then be transmitted from the ticks to the host via saliva. Other infections known as co-infections can also be transmitted, causing further complications. These infections may include Bartonella, Ehrlichia, Babesia, Colorado tick fever, and anaplasmosis, among others. Often, dormant infections can become active following an infection of Borrelia burgdorferi or exacerbated by the co-infections associated with chronic Lyme disease complex. In addition to the weakening of the patient's immune system from the long exposure to tick-borne infections, patients will commonly present several secondary co-infections such as viruses, fungi, and parasites which can also be contracted or reactivated due to weakened immunity. This multitude of infections in combination with other factors makes up what is known as chronic Lyme disease complex. The most common symptom of Lyme disease is a bullseye rash, which can develop within three to 30 days. We should mention that even though it is the most common symptom, the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society reports fewer than 50% of patients with Lyme disease recall getting a rash and fewer than 50% recall even getting bitten by a tick. Also, many Lyme disease patients develop flu-like symptoms and joint pain, but in many cases, others may not exhibit symptoms for years. One of the reasons many patients have symptoms but may never be diagnosed with Lyme disease is the disease's ability to mimic over 300 different symptoms. It also mimics various diseases such as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, Parkinson's, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and other autoimmune diseases. Many times it comes down to patients doing their own research and approaching their doctor to test for Lyme disease. If a patient's doctor is willing to test for Lyme disease, it can still be very difficult to diagnose due to patients receiving inaccurate results on common Lyme blood tests via ELISA or Western blot. According to ILADS, the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society, some studies indicate up to 50% of the patients tested for Lyme disease receive false negative results. If a patient receives a positive diagnosis, the normal course of treatment recommended is a form of oral antibiotics, commonly doxycycline. However, there are several key factors why antibiotics, oral or intravenous, may not be effective for long-term results for chronic Lyme disease patients. One of the biggest factors against using just antibiotics for treatment is something called biofilm. As the Lyme disease infection moves throughout the body, it creates what is known as biofilm communities. Biofilm communities are gelatinous substances that allow Lyme disease and its co-infections to hide. This biofilm can prevent antibiotic effectiveness and the body's own immune system from fighting Lyme disease. This biofilm also allows the disease to lay dormant in the body until conditions become favorable for it to continue its attack. The second problem that comes with treatment by antibiotics alone is the complex of multiple infections that can exist in a patient. Parasitic, fungal, and viral infections are common infections that chronic Lyme disease complex patients are dealing with when they are in an immune-compromised state. As a defense mechanism, Borrelia can also go into hiding by shifting the antigens on its cell wall. B 
Because the immune system is looking for a specific antigen to target the infection, Borrelia is effectively preventing the immune system from being able to find the infection. One of Borrelia's and other co-infections defense mechanisms is to hide intracellularly, allowing it to go inside the membrane of cells. Due to the lack of penetration by antibiotics, including other conventional and natural treatments, this can also decrease the effectiveness of overall outcomes, leaving patients symptomatic and with a return of disease. When it comes to chronic Lyme disease and its treatments, antibiotics, biofilm, and the multiple infections are only a few pieces of the puzzle. That is why Unipathic Medicine and Invita Medical Center have partnered to create new standards for the integrative effective treatment of chronic Lyme disease complex. Finally, with the advancement of technology and research, patients may now have viable options to better care. To learn more about chronic Lyme disease complex and personalized treatment options, contact us at Invita.com.